Electricity is used so often for so many day-to-day -day things that we usually take it for granted. But what exactly is going on when you flick that switch? This unit looks at how electricity flows through circuits, how metal wires conduct electricity, how components can be added to circuits, and the difference between series and parallel circuits. Okay. Electricity can flow along wires, either from a source like the mains or from a battery to wherever we need it. This of electrons is called an electric current. An electric current is very useful, but to use it the current must flow around a circuit. Like an electric circuit, this go-kart track has to be an unbroken loop for the go-karts to continue racing round and round in one direction. In other words, it has to be a complete circuit. It's the same with an electric current. For instance, with a portable video game, electricity has to keep flowing from a battery through a switch around other parts of a circuit and back to the battery. It has to be a complete circuit with no gaps or breaks that would prevent the flow of electricity. So, for electricity to flow, there must be a complete circuit. But as well as this, all the parts or components of that circuit must be made of materials that conduct electricity. The electricity cables we have in our houses have a metal wire inside, usually copper, which conducts electricity. Electric current is the flow of electrons in a circuit. Electrons are found inside everything, but in metals they are free to move around. When electrons can move relatively freely inside a material, here the copper wire, it's called a conductor. Other materials, like the plastic that covers the copper wire, don't allow electricity to flow through them and are known as insulators. Insulators are therefore used to protect us from the flow of electricity and prevent an electric shock. Harris, can you fetch me a towel, please? So, with a complete circuit and the current flowing, we can use the electricity different ways. Items such as bulbs connected into circuits are called components. Bulbs change electricity into light. Inside a bulb is a very thin piece of wire called a filament, much thinner than the wire used in the rest of the circuit that the current has been travelling along. When the current flows through, the filament glows white hot. As all the electrons move through the really thin wire, there's a lot of friction, which heats up the wire so the bulb glows and gives us light. To make a current flow, it needs a push from an energy source. This push can be either from the mains or, as with this CD player, from batteries. It takes a bit more than battery push to get a bowling ball on target, but there are similarities. When you're bowling, you provide the push that makes the ball travel towards the skittles. The circuit is complete because the ball continues to be pushed along until it's returned to you. The larger the push you give the ball, 
the faster it goes, and the more likely it is to knock down lots of skittles. With electricity, it's the amount of voltage available that provides the push. The larger the push, or voltage, bigger the current around the circuit. The larger the current, the more energy there is in the circuit. There are two main layouts of circuit, series and parallel. A series circuit is the simpler of the two. All of the components in a series circuit are in a sequence following each other. There is only one route for the current to take. The electric current flows through all of the components in turn. Here, the row of bulbs in the fairy lights, until it gets back to where it started from. The problem with this kind of circuit is that if one of the components is taken out or it breaks, the whole circuit is broken and the current stops. Most of the circuits we use every day are parallel circuits. A parallel circuit provides at least two, but usually more, alternative routes for the current to flow. This racetrack is like a parallel circuit. There is an alternative route for the traffic to flow. If the cars on the branch of the track were stopped along the branch, the other cars on the main track could still move along. This is the big advantage of a parallel circuit. If components and switches are put on each different branch of the circuit, they can be operated without affecting the other components in the circuit. So if one branch of the circuit is broken of an open switch or a fail bulb, the current can still flow around the rest of the circuit. Most electrical gadgets in the home have parallel circuits. And if you're in a hurry to get ready and get out, that can come in very useful. With a hairdryer, for example, if you had a series circuit, you'd have just two options, fan and heater on, or fan and heater off. Not much choice, really. However, using a parallel circuit means that you can choose to cut the current to the heater but keep it flowing to the fan, giving you a cold shot of air when things get too warm. Yeah.